ओम साई राम श्री साई सच्चरित्र चैप्टर 15। द रीडर्स मे रिमेंबर दैट मेंशन वाज मेड इन द सिक्स चैप्टर रिगार्डिंग द रामनवमी फेस्टिवल इन शिरडी हाउ द फेस्टिवल ओरिजिनेटेड एंड हाउ इन द अर्ली इयर्स देर वॉज ग्रेट डिफिकल्टी इन गेटिंग अ गुड हरिदास फॉर डूइंग कीर्तन ऑन दोज ओकेजन and how baba permanently entrusted this function that is kirtan to das gadu and how he has been doing it successfully ever since now in this chapter we shall describe the manner in which das gadu has been doing the kirtan naradiya kirtan paddhati generally our hari das while doing the kirtan wear a gala and full dress they put on a headdress either a pheta or a turban a long flowing coat with a shirt inside and upparni short dhotar on the shoulders and the usual long dhotar from the waist below after dressing himself in this fashion for some kirtan in the shirdi village das ganu once went to baba for prostrating before him baba asked him well bride groom Where are you going dressed so beautifully like this for doing a kirtan came the reply then baba said why do you want all this paraphernalia coat upparni pheta etc lay off all that before me why wear them on the body das ganu immediately took them off and placed them at baba's feet thenceforth das ganu never wore these things while doing the kirtan he was always bare from waist upwards a pair of chiplis was in his hand and a garland around his neck this was not in consonance with the practice generally followed by all the haridas but this is the best and the purest method the sage narad from whom the kirtan paddhati originated wore nothing on his torso and head he carried a veena in his hand and wandered from place to place singing the glory of the lord mr cholkar's sugarless tea initially baba was known in pune and ahmednagar districts but nana sahib sandolkar by his word of mouth and das ganu by his splendid kirtans spread the fame of baba in the konkan that is mumbai presidency in fact it was das ganu may god bless him who by his beautiful and inimitable kirtans made baba available to so many people there the audience who came to hear the kirtans had different tastes some like the erudition or learning of the haridas some his gestures some his singing some his wit and humor some his preliminary dissertation on vedanta and some his main theme and so on but among them there were very few who by hearing the kirtan get faith and devotion or love for god or saints the effect of hearing das ganu's kirtan on the minds of audience was however electric as it were we give an instance here Das Ganu was once doing his kirtan and singing the glory of Sai Baba in the Koparneshwar temple in Thane. One Mr. Chandolkar, a poor man serving as a temporary employee in the civil court of Thane, was amongst the audience. He heard Das Ganu's kirtan most attentively and was much moved. He there and then mentally bowed and vowed to Sai Baba, saying, "Baba, I am a poor man unable to support my family if by your grace i pass the departmental examination and get a permanent post i shall go to shirdi fall at your feet and distribute sugar candy in your name and as luck would have it mr cholkar did pass the examination and did get the permanent post and now it remained for him to fulfill his vow the sooner the better mr cholkar was a poor man with a large family to support and he could not afford to pay the expenses of a shirdi trip as is well said one can easily cross over the dhane ghat in thane district or even the sayadri range 
but it is very difficult for a poor man to cross the umbar ghat that is the threshold of his house as mr cholkar was anxious to fulfill his vow as early as possible he resolved to cut down his expenses and save money he determined not to use sugar in his diet and began to take his tea without it after he was able to save some money in this way he came to shirdi took baba's darshan fell at his feet offered a coconut distributed it with a clean conscience along with sugar candy as per his vow and said to baba that he was much pleased with his darshan and that his desires were fulfilled that day mr cholkar was in the masjid with his host bapu sahib zo when the host and the guest both got up and were about to leave the masjid baba spoke to jog as follows give him your guest a cup of tea fully saturated with sugar hearing these significant words mr cholkar was much moved he was wonderstruck his eyes were bedewed with tears and he fell at baba's feet again mr jog was also curious about this direction baba wanted by his words to create faith and devotion in cholkar's mind he hinted as it were there he got the sugar candy as per his vow and that he knew fully well his secret and determination not to use sugar in his diet baba meant to say if you spread your palms with devotion before me i am immediately with you day and night though i am here physically still i know what you do beyond the seven seas go wherever you wish over the wide world i am with you my abode is in your heart and i am within you always worship me who is seated in your heart as well as in the hearts of all beings blessed and fortunate indeed is he who knows me thus what a beautiful and important lesson baba had thus imparted to mr cholkar two lizards now we close this chapter with a story of two little lizards once baba was sitting in the masjid a devotee sat in front of him and when a lizard tick tick out of curiosity the devotee asked baba whether this tick ticking of the lizard signified anything good or was it a bad omen baba said that the lizard was overjoyed as her sister from aurangabad was coming to see her the devotee sat silent not making out the meaning of baba's words immediately a gentleman from aurangabad came on horseback to see baba he wanted to proceed further but his horse would not go as it was hungry and wanted grams he took out the bag of grams from his shoulders to bring grams and dashed it on the ground to remove dirt a lizard came out from there and in the presence of all climbed up the wall baba asked the question near devotee to mark her well she at once went stuttering to her sister both sisters met each other after a long time kissed and embraced each other whirled around and danced with love where is shirdi and where is aurangabad for the lizard how should the man on the horseback come there from aurangabad with the lizard and how should baba make the prophecy of the meeting of the two sisters all this is really very wonderful and proves the omniscience and the all knowing nature of baba post script he who respectfully reads this chapter or studies it daily will get all his miseries removed by the grace of sadguru shri sai baba bow to shri sai peace to all om sai ram